In the blue corner is the Being Supreme, the Lord of Love and the reigning world champion in the infinite battle of good versus evil, the one and only God Almighty. In the red corner is Heaven's Outcast, the Devil from Down Below, and the one and only Master of Deception and Father of Lies, the Prince of Darkness. That's pretty much how the story goes, or at least that's the tale many people tell. But Satan, he's a complicated entity. There's much more to him than most people know. He's not just a devil with a pitchfork who stands on your shoulder telling you to steal a candy bar. He has a long history and he's gotten up to stuff you wouldn't believe. Today, we're going to learn a lot more about this overlord of the underworld. Number 50. Okay, so first you need to know who Satan is. It's a bit more complicated than you think, but we'll try and make this one as short as we can. There's a kind of devil in all the Abrahamic religions, but in Christianity, he plays a bigger role than he does in Judaism or Islam. In all three religions, Satan is there to make people impure, to lure them to the dark side. The Old Testament talks about an entity that is an adversary of God. He's there in the book of Job, making life really hard for Job. He kills Job's children, his servants, and for good measure, he covers Job in boils. He does all this to see if Job will renounce his belief in God. So there you go, Satan is there to mess with people's beliefs. Still, in that old book, he's far from being a cloven-hooved beast with horns that can spin a young girl's head around. In the New Testament, there's talk of fallen angels. In the story of Matthew, there's a devil-type thing that tries to persuade Jesus to give up his belief in God. He's yet again the tempter, the evil to all the good in the world. In short, there are lots of stories. There's Lucifer, sometimes interchangeable as Satan, who is said to have rebelled against God, and with a gang of other fallen angels, they wage a war against God. Then you have Beelzebub, a flying demon who's also a kind of Satan character. And in the book of Revelations, you have the Red Serpent, which you could call devilish. But what about the pitchfork swinging, constantly cursing guy who isn't very photogenic? Well, he was made up by some creative folks in the Middle Ages. Dante Alighieri wrote about Satan in the Divine Comedy in the early 14th century. This is how Satan is described in the Inferno part. He has three faces, he has a chest of ice, he has mighty bat-like wings, crunching teeth, and he's generally a rotten thing. While the King James Bible became a bestseller after it was published in 1611, Lucifer, aka the Morning Star, played a big part, as it did in John Milton's 1667 masterpiece Paradise Lost. Now we have a much more wicked tempter, a more monstrous figure who's a real brute. Satan was no longer just an angel that had switched jobs, he was something more terrifying. The cloven hooves and horns were often a feature which relates back to Pan, a mythological half-goat, half-man figure that was always wild and irrepressibly horny. When you think about famine, plague, and the rest of the crappy things that made Europe a horrible home for a long time, it only makes sense that this devil turned into something absolutely terrifying. This is the guy evangelists conjure up in their nightmares. He's the entity that possessed witches and made Hollywood tons of money. The bottom line is the devil evolved throughout history. Ok, we had to get that out of the way, now for some short facts. Number 49. Not surprisingly, when you go filling people's heads with stories of this beast, it affects some folks in a bad way. In 2018, an Australian man beat his best friend to death because he thought his friend was Satan. Satanic serial killer Richard Ramirez once shouted at a victim, swear on Satan. This one survived, many did not. In fact, a lot of killers have claimed to either be in the service of Satan or believe they're killing Satan. Either way, most people would believe Satan isn't to blame. As you'll see in the show, the devil is often a scapegoat. Well, that's what the law thinks. Number 48. A 2016 Gallup poll revealed 79% of the American respondents said they believed in God, but only 61% of the people said they believed in the devil. Number 47. A similar poll went out in the UK, but only 18% of the people said they believed in the devil. Number 46. US televangelist Paul Crouch once said that if you play a part of Led Zeppelin's song Stairway to Heaven backwards, there is a satanic message in there. This is how it allegedly goes. Here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan. He will give you those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. Guitarist Jimmy Page once said it was hard enough to write the song forwards, never mind backward too. By the way, some experts now say the number in the Bible that represents the number of the beast is 616. Number 45. 
There's a church of Satan, but its founders don't actually believe Satan or God for that matter exists. One of the high priests said believers are insane and he says Satan just represents someone who is an adversary or an opposer, someone who questions everything. Recently, a British member of the Church of Satan said Satanism has less to do with doing bad things than it does with being an atheist and a libertarian. In the US, you can pay $225 and get a lifetime membership for the Church of Satan. Number 44. Some people believe if Jesus is the Son of God, then the Antichrist is the Son of Satan. An example would be Damien Thorne in the Omen movies. Number 43. It's been said that the first of those Omen movies was cursed, with the reason being a lot of really unlucky things happened to the cast and crew. The weirdest of all of them involved effects artist John Richardson. He was the guy responsible for creating the famous decapitation scene in the movie. During the filming of his next movie, he got into a car crash. He survived, but his passenger was decapitated. On top of that, an animal trainer was killed by a tiger after making the omen, and during the filming of the omen, a stuntman was attacked by trained Rottweilers. Number 42. The Pope has been accused of being the Antichrist from time to time. Martin Luther once said the Pope is the true end times Antichrist who has raised himself over and sent himself against Christ. Number 41. Quite a few American presidents have at one point been accused of being the Antichrist. Those include Donald Trump, Barack Obama, John F. Kennedy, and Ronald Reagan. Hillary Clinton has been called out too. Number 40. Okay, so some people think the mark of the beast will appear on us all at some point. It comes from something written in the book of Revelations. It goes like this. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. What could that mean? Maybe subcutaneous technology could be the mark of the beast. In the past, people used to say the number was 666, hidden in barcodes. That's been debunked, but people have now moved on to microchips under the skin. Some evangelicals have already said those chips will be the mark of the beast that gets under everyone's skin. Number 39. Quite a few well-known people have said the Freemasons worship the devil. We don't have any proof to back that up. Now we'll talk about some really dark things the devil has supposedly been involved with. Number 38. According to the Canon Episcopi, a text of medieval canon law dating back to the 10th century, witchcraft was alive and well in Europe back then. It says witches flew around on broomsticks and one of their favorite destinations was the forest. The forest is where they made love to demons and sometimes killed infants in the name of Satan. Number 37. Things got much more heated in the 15th century. That was when the book Malleus Maleficarum was written, a treatise on witches that detailed the exploits of people possessed by Satan. It might sound funny to you, but it led to massive persecution of people accused of being witches. Thousands of people were tortured and killed during decades of witch hunts. Number 36. The first European folks to make the New World their home weren't much better. The Puritans of New England talked about babies being born with claws and horns, which was a sure sign the devil had infiltrated the woman. Some of those Puritans believed the Native Americans were children of the devil. Number 35. It was mostly thanks to the Enlightenment thinkers in the 17th and 18th centuries that belief in witchcraft started to die. Unfortunately, some parts of Europe and the New World remained in the dark and dismissed what those thinkers said. Witch hunts stopped in most places, but belief in Satan remained strong. Number 34. Satan doesn't just appear in Christian Bibles, he also shows up in the Talmud and has been discussed by Jewish rabbis at length with some positing that Satan was involved in the story of Moses returning from Mount Sinai and that he might have played a role in the Purim story which tells of how the Jews were saved from the Persian Empire. Number 33. And speaking of the Talmud, the origin of the name Satan actually comes from the Hebrew word Hasatan, which means opposer or adversary, and was used in the Hebrew Bible as a term for both human enemies of the Jewish people as well as supernatural forces. Number 32. In 1966, after the Beatles member John Lennon said his band was more popular than Jesus, people in the southern United States took to burning Beatles records even if they loved them. Some people believe Lennon made a pact with the devil so he could get famous. The devil got his due though because Lennon was shot dead in the street. Number 31. In the 1960s, the Beatles were accused of putting satanic messages in their music. Decades later, an article in the Vatican newspaper praised the band for their melodic tunes. Now something that might frighten you. Number 30. In 2018, The Atlantic reported that priests in the US were being asked to perform an unusual number of exorcisms. The article said the official exorcist for Indianapolis has received 1,700 requests so far in 2018. That's a lot for just one state, especially as there are only around 100 official Catholic exorcists in the US. Number 29. In 2020 in Panama, seven people died in a mass exorcism. The victims included a pregnant woman and her five young kids. 
an extremist religious group was blamed for the deaths when it was discovered members of the groups held natives captive and beat them with Bibles, burned them with torches, and cut them with machetes. This particular sect was denounced as satanic by local church authorities. Number 28. The novel The Exorcist was partly based on the alleged demonic possession of a 14-year-old American kid known as Roland Doe. That wasn't his real name. The exorcism was kind of like in the movie, in that the boy allegedly spoke in a weird voice, things flew on their own around the room, and the kid couldn't stand to be near a holy cross. At one point, marks just appeared on the kid's body. It's also said he got up and broke a priest's nose. Number 27. In 2014, two women in the US were charged with murder after killing two children aged 1 and 2 during an exorcism. The women said the kids' eyes had turned black due to the devil being inside them. They badly beat two older kids, but thankfully they survived the ordeal. We found more recent cases of children being killed in exorcisms in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. If you think belief in demonic possession is dead, you are very wrong. Number 26. Parts of the Bible talk about Jesus doing exorcisms. This is Mark chapter 1, verses 25-26. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. It's a pity all exorcisms aren't so quick and easy. Number 25. The saying, the devil is in the details, actually comes from God is in the details. Number 24. Satan goes by other names as well as the devil, including Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, the Prince of Darkness, Lord of the Flies, the Antichrist, the Father of Lies, and Malach. Okay, back to more dark details. Number 23. In 1692, in Salem Village, Massachusetts, a group of young girls were accused of being in league with Satan. What happened next became known as the Salem Witch Trials. The accused girls, as well as women and men, appeared at a special court to address the accusation that they were getting friendly with the devil, which of course wasn't true at all. Number 22. 20 people in all were hanged by the neck in Salem for the crime of practicing the devil's magic, but over time, around 150 people were accused of being witches. One of the men who was executed was pressed to death, which had to be a very painful way to go. The authorities thought if he was tortured he might spill the beans, but there weren't any beans to spill. A Massachusetts general court soon reversed the guilty verdicts, but that came too late for the 20 victims. The youngest of the accused was a four-year-old girl named Dorothy Good. She told the court her mom had been talking to the devil. She was also said to bite people like a wild animal. The next fact is just plain crazy. Number 21. Believe it or not, animals played a big part in the hysteria that happened at Salem. Yeah, cats, dogs, and other animals were also said to be possessed by Satan. Some folks believe the animals were kind of a team member for the witches, and like some of the accused witches, they had to go. In one instance, a girl had convulsions and it was believed she was a witch. She said the neighbor's dog had bewitched her. That dog was immediately shot. A local minister later declared the dog innocent of any wrongdoing. Later, another mutt took a bullet even though the local said it was a victim of evil. Number 20. Did they really do a float test on accused witches or is that just made up? It's not fiction at all, and it was in vogue in the 17th century. Sometimes called dunking or ordeal by water, it would involve throwing a person, usually a woman, into a river. If she sank, she was innocent of working with the Prince of Darkness, but if she floated, well, obviously she was in league with Satan. You might also wonder what the rationale was behind that, but let's remember the Age of Reason was still a century away. Some people said water was pure, and that's why it wouldn't accept witches. You really wouldn't want to show off your treading water skills in those days. Number 19. You might wonder what the difference is between a demon and the devil. Basically, the devil is the CEO of evil and demons are his managers. You could say those who demons possess are the folks on the lower end of the pay scale. Number 18. The American anthropologist Erica Bourguignon spent a lifetime studying demons and she said 488 societies in the world believed in demonic possession. You don't need Satan to have demons, but you need evil. In the past, if you were mentally ill, sometimes people would say you were a victim of demonic possession. That still happens today in some societies. A psychiatrist in northern Thailand once said he took his team to the villages far from the city. In some villages, he found autistic kids locked in cages. The families would offer chicken sacrifices to the evil spirit so it would leave the kid's body. Coming up next is something called the Satan Defense. Number 17. Satan gets the blame for a lot of bad things that people do, so you could call the poor fella a handy scapegoat. In 2016, a guy appeared in court after shooting two teenagers. One of them died and the other was badly injured. 
What was the guy's defense? He actually said Satan made him do it and so he was actually innocent. The guy named Cody Lott was actually incensed when the media said killing two kids on their way home from school for absolutely nothing was senseless. Lott said the devil told him to do it, so how was it senseless? He will stay in prison until at least 2046. God might feature in the courtroom, but the justice system has no time for Satan. That's kind of weird when you think about it. Number 16. Satan has a little to do with Halloween. No one's exactly sure how the tradition started, but it likely goes back to harvest festivals that were held pre-Christianity. The Christians, however, got hold of it and started calling it All Hallows Day, which was a day to celebrate saints and the faithful that had died. This somehow turned into a night where people walk around dressed as Hello Kitty and maniacs put glass in candy. This next one is seriously messed up. Number 15. There's no shortage of people who claim they're the devil. These egomaniacs are everywhere and they span all age groups. A recent case involved a naked woman breaking into a family's house. The owner told her to leave, to which the woman laughed and then claimed she was the devil. All hell broke loose when the woman attacked the man and his family, even though he had a gun. 39 shots were fired, but the woman wasn't hit. Not only that, she also managed to fight off all the family. The man later said she had the strength of four grown men. Maybe she was the devil, or she'd been taking some serious drugs. You can find multiple stories every year in the USA where people do horrible things claiming to be the devil. For some reason, they're usually women. Number 14. There is a term she-devil, but it usually refers to a woman who manipulates men or does horrible things to them. While sometimes we refer to Satan as he, in reality or super-reality, the devil is sexless. However, in Hebrew, the noun for Satan is a masculine noun. Number 13. If Satan is real, he must work around the clock, so he makes Elon Musk look lazy. That's because around 150,000 people die in the world every day of the week. Considering most of those people will not be faithful to God and will no doubt have a rap sheet of sins a mile long, the intake process for hell must keep Satan real busy. Number 12. In the Bible, it doesn't say Satan created hell. Nope, he was condemned to live in the inferno. He'd probably prefer a three-bedroom suite in Manhattan, but sinners can't be choosers. The Bible actually teaches us that Satan spends most of his time on Earth. Hell is a little confusing, so we thought we'd refer to that paragon of truth, Billy Graham. In his writing, he says the everlasting fire was created for the devil and his angels. He also says that the devil can roam through the earth going back and forth in it. And there's also the theory that sinners can be cast into the pits of hell only on Judgment Day, so right now they're on remand. Those who wrote the big book talk about Jesus mentioning eternal life and eternal punishment, but some Christian scholars argue that eternal punishment just means being wiped out, like completely being deleted from the big server in the sky, so hell could be absolutely nothing. The idea of a goat man with a pitchfork burning your toes with his cigar is entirely a modern fancy. It would have been alien to JC. Number 11. The French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre wrote a play about hell called No Exit. A well-known phrase from that play is hell is other people. In the play, people die and end up in a waiting room, but the thing is they're there for eternity. They soon get on each other's nerves, and that waiting room becomes a kind of hell. It sounds a lot like social media. Ok, we've reached the top 10 now, time to ramp up the evil. Number 10. Some Christians, mostly of the ilk that have Jesus bumper stickers, believe in something called the rapture. This is when the world ends and the goodies on earth, with the once faithful dead, will be beamed up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This great kidnapping will lead to eternity in heaven. As for those left behind, things aren't supposed to be great for them. Maybe they'll have a date with Satan at some point, or they just have to go on to act in very popular TV series. By the way, most Christians don't actually believe the big snatch will ever happen. Number 9. God was sometimes really wrathful. You certainly didn't want to get on the wrong side of God. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, God has some stern words with Satan, saying, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Number 8. You should know that you shouldn't make deals with Satan because whatever he gives, he'll take back double. He once offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, but in the small print there was a provisio stating that in return Jesus had to worship Satan. Jesus' response to this offer was, Away from me, Satan. Number 7. You've heard of the seven deadly sins, but did you know some people say behind each one is a demon who can tempt you into committing that sin? The sins are pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and lust. Satan himself is behind wrath. A prince of hell named Belphegor is the gluttony guy. He tries to convince folks to get really rich, which we all know in the real world gluttony has its fair share of problems. Number 6. What do you think is the most committed sin by men? 
greed? Sloth? Nah, it's lust, according to some research we read. Think about how often every day you have a sexual thought. For women, that sin was pride. Number 5. Speaking of sexual thoughts, there are demons called incubi and succubi. The former is a demon in male form that makes love to women in their sleep and the latter does the same but she's female and chooses sleeping men. Such stories were around a long time before Christ appeared on the scene, so they're not only Christian stories. In the past, these demons were sometimes accused of messing with a man's health, while women were said to sometimes be impregnated by them. Maybe demons weren't the problem. Now for something very real. Number 4. There's a book called The Devil's Bible that was written by a monk over a period of decades in the 13th century. It's quite the tome, too, weighing in at 165 pounds. Some people believe the devil himself was behind the book, but most folks think that the writer just had a lot of time on his hands. If you wrote all day every day, the book would take about 20 years to finish. It got the name Devil's Bible because of an illustration on page 290. The legend behind the book says that a monk had broken his vows and faced being walled up alive. His other option was to agree to write a book that contained all human knowledge. That wasn't going to be so easy. But what's a monk going to do? He tried writing the book, but it was too hard, so the story goes that he asked Lucifer for help in exchange for his soul. All he had to do was feature that picture of the devil. Number 3. Ok, so how would you contact the devil if you wanted to do a deal with him? He's obviously a busy demon and you can bet he has a lot of requests. We looked online for how to contact Satan, but there are no clear guidelines. There are a bunch of rituals you can find online that tell you how to summon demons, which usually involve evocation spells. There's a new book out there containing such spells, although the International Association of Exorcists condemned it, saying it was like putting a grenade in people's hands. It's aimed at kids, too, telling them if they have too much homework or life ain't going so well, they might want to draw some lines on the floor and dial up some demons. Number 2. The good news is that after looking at a bunch of Christian websites, not one agreed that the devil can read your thoughts. Satan, unlike God, is not omniscient. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the devil can plant things in your head. Watch out though, because this is in the Bible. Brothers and sisters, be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith. An interpretation of this could be that the devil is always there, just waiting for you to show some weakness. When he sees you're weak, he can somehow use his trickery to create circumstances around you that will tempt you to sin. He also has a network of demons doing such bad work. Demons that might have been busy during all those Catholic Church abuse scandals. Number 1. So what is the fate of Satan? Can't we just get rid of him? According to the book of Revelations, at some point Satan will be forced to hang up his gloves. This is what's written about his forced retirement. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. Now you should watch this, 50 insane Cold War facts that will shock you. Or have a look at this, 